Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to symbolize points by varying size. This video is part of a summer course organized for IHG Delft on creating data visualizations with graphs, maps and animations. The tutorial can also be found on GIS OpenCourseWare. You can find the link in the description of this video. I would also like to acknowledge Dirk Voets. I have modified his materials for this tutorial. We are first going to download data from Natural Earth, a great open data set. Download the Geo package and save it to your hard drive. After downloading, extract the zip file. You can use 7zip.org or the one from uh, Windows. You see by default the Windows uh, will create a folder with .geo package, which is a bit strange for a folder name and will not work in QGIS. So you have to rename the output folder and let's call it uh, summer course where we will store all the data for the summer course and subfolder population. Click extract to unzip the files and folders. And here we see the result and under packages you can then find the geo package. So let's go to QGIS and there browse to the folder where we just extracted uh, the layer and make it a favorite so we can easily go to our summer course folder also for the next tutorials and there we find the geo package and we drag it to the map canvas and there we are going to select the layers that we are going to use we are going to use a polygon layer uh, with the countries and uh, choose a one that also has the lakes and the second layer if we keep our control button pressed we can select the second layer is a population layer with the cities populated places layer and then we click add layers to add it to the map canvas and there are the layers make sure that your points layer is on top the general order of layers in the layers panel is first points then lines then polygons and then rasters now we are going to focus on styling the countries so uncheck the points layer and go to the styling panel. Make sure that the countries layer is uh, the target layer. And then uh, let's first change the color by clicking on the color bar. You can change colors easily by uh, using uh, the sliders or you can type the RGB color code. In this case, we will use 200, 200, 200 for red, green and blue, which will give a gray value. So I'll explain how this works. If red, green and blue are zero, we get black. If they are 255, we get its color, as you can see here. So if B is 255, it turns into blue. And if they're all 255, it's white. And every value in between, and if it's the same value, would give a gray tone. Let's go back, click on simple fill, and there we can also change the stroke color. And let's change it from black to white. So as we learned, we use 255, 255, 255. So now we have a nice background layer that is subtle because it is uh, low in the visual hierarchy. Let's focus now on the main layer that is going to convey our message. That's the point layer. So make sure that it is the target in the layer styling panel. Then change the renderer from single symbol to graduated and use for value the pop max field, which contains the populations of the cities. Change the method to size. Click classify to apply. We see that the population numbers uh, are very high and large numbers, and it's much better to express this in uh, millions. So we're going to calculate the population per million. So we divide it in the expression dialog by a million. Click OK to close the dialog and click classify to apply the expression. Now click on the symbol to change uh, the properties. Let's first change the color from the random color that was assigned to a nice purple color. And we use here the RGB 131, 99 and 236. We'll also use 50% opacity. So opacity is the opposite of transparency. Let's go back. For now we have used uh, the equal count or quantile mode, which gives a bit strange borders. Let's go for pretty breaks 
which uh, gives nice rounded numbers. You can also play with uh, the trim setting to change the uh, precision value for the decimals. But here uh, we keep the trim checked. You can also see that the smallest circles have an uh, outline that is almost as big as the surface of the area of the point. So we're going to change this uh, by removing the lines from the smallest point. So we choose no pen. Go back. Now let's change the ranges of the size from 1 to 12 to uh, make it uh, a bit bigger and nicer. But you see when we change this setting we also use the outlines for uh, the other circles than the small ones. So we need to set that back. Make sure they're not selected and then go back to change it to solid line. And then again click on the smaller circle and uh, under simple marker change that one back to no pen. So we now have again that the smallest points have no outline and the larger ones have. Until now we have been using the geographic coordinate system for this project. Let's change this to an equal earth projection that preserves the proportion of surface areas. At filter type equal earth to see which projections we can choose from. You see that there are different choices here based on where you want to center the projection. Let's choose the one for uh, Greenwich. You also see that there are some providers uh, from S3 but we will use the EPSG code. Now the background is white and it would be more realistic to have a nice ocean color there. So let's uh, add from the Geo package a layer which has the ocean. Here's one. And drag it to the map canvas. It will also get a random color. So let's uh, change the fill color to something that looks more like an ocean but we still keep it a bit subtle. So we're going to choose some uh, blue. We'll start from blue and then use the sliders to modify this to something that uh, looks nice. Go back and under simple fill also remove the stroke color by choosing uh, for stroke style no pen. And then of course the ocean layer needs to be at the bottom. It's helpful for the user if they see some uh, labels for these cities. So we're going to add some labels. Make sure that uh, the places layer is the target layer in the layer styling panel and go to the labels tab, change to single labels. And we use the name field by default, but uh, you see it's super crowded in the map. So we need to make uh, some adjustments there. Let's first change the font to uh, Calibri, which is a sans serif uh, font. And we change the size to 13. Then we can improve the readability by using a text buffer. And we make a size of uh, 0.5 millimeters. And we use the same color as we used uh, before, the C8C8C8, which we can also uh, type there. That's a hexadecimal code that we can also use to uh, configure the colors. And you can see that that's equal to RGB 200, 200, 200 as we said before. This gives a subtle background buffer, but there's still too many places here. Now the map is still too crowded, so let's do something about it. Let's go to uh, the rendering tab, and there we check the box to show all labels for this layer, including colliding labels. This of course makes it worse, but if we then under show label go to the data defined overwrite, we can add an expression to only show the places that are larger than a certain size. You can play with that value. So look for pop max under fields and values, double click to add it to the expression, type larger than, and then uh, here we will use uh, 10 million. So only cities that are larger than 10 million will be uh, shown. And that uh, very much improves our visualization here. So we can change the settings to better place the labels, but uh, here we are gonna do that manually. And you see here that uh, labels toolbar with buttons to adjust the labels. So we can move labels by clicking this button. And when we click on a label, it will first ask us for a primary key. We keep it as a default. And then we can start moving the labels by clicking on them and dragging them to the position where we want them. 
make sure the labels are uh, as least as possible crossing uh, boundaries and uh, that it's still clear to which city they point, so bring them close together. Thank you.